Hi, Stamati here from Redware. Uh, this is one of our most popular games, Fish. Um, and we're going to see how to make it from scratch. Um, but this version that we're looking at now uses some um, uh, up-to-date uh, functionality in Scratch. So we're broadcasting between sprites and we're using a cloning feature. But let's have a look at the game first. So start the game, we have a shark that moves around the screen. You eat the fish and you get a score. But if you hit the diver, um, or eat the diver rather, your score is reset to zero. And um, sometimes the divers uh, replicate to make the game a bit more difficult. So we're going to learn how to make this game from scratch. Uh, of course, you can just see inside if you want to use the existing game. Um, right, so let's start a new game. We're going to start this one completely from scratch. So let's get rid of the cat. We're going to add in the shark called shark two, and we're going to add in the diver diver two. So there are the two. Um, oh, we've got to add the fish as well. Sorry, the puffer fish. So originally we used the yellow fish, but it seems to have gone from scratch right now. So uh, let's start with the shark. So the shark's going to be classic uh, mouse following behavior. So we need to start with a green button. To start it off, uh, we need to go to looks and change the size or set the size uh, to 30%. And I want it to start in the middle. So on the motion, we want to go to zero, zero. And then for mouse following behavior, we need a forever loop. And we need to point in direction, point towards the mouse pointer. And then we need to move. Uh, you can play around with the speed here. I'm gonna I'm gonna use seven. So now it's the sh the shark is uh, is doing what we want. Uh, there's just one little glitch here where it, it wobbles like that. So all we need to do is, is put an if statement in, and we want the to take that move, put it in there, and we want to say if the distance to the mouse pointer is greater than five. So we use the sensing, and we've got distance to mouse pointer, and then we use the operators greater than five. So if the distance to the mouse pointer is greater than five, put that into the if. Now we've got the behavior that we're looking for. If you want to speed it up, just change that move to 10 points, or you can actually stick it right on the mouse with the move to the mouse pointer. So that's our shark. ready so now we're going to make the puffle fish um, and we're going to use a clone technique here so when we do the green button when so when the game starts uh, what we want to do is make a clone which we do here create clone of myself and then we've got uh, when I start as a clone uh, here. Seem to have cat's ears on, to, on my blocks, which I haven't noticed before. Right, so when I start as a clone, uh, we do, so if we just do this here, it's just, it's almost the same as, um, as, uh, as, as pressing on the green button, uh, but we might just delete that clone there so we only have one. So. Uh, press on the green button, and here's oh, uh, yeah, I think that works. Um, right, uh, we might have to hide it. Hide. That's it. So that's your general. Whenever you want to do a clone, probably the best to keep everything in in the same sprite so that you can see. Uh, what you're doing. So now, just as usual, just as we would on a green button, 
uh, we want to just change the size of the of the clone set the size to 20 percent uh, we can go to a random position so like that um, and then we just do a forever loop uh, and I just want this uh, to, to sort of randomly wander around the screen. So what I'm going to do is move three. And each time, I'm just going to turn a little bit. Uh, use a random minus 15 to plus 15. And I'm just missing a show here. Probably after. You want to show it after. We set the size. So there we've got our puffle fish moving around. Now the great thing about cloning is we can just do a repeat here. And now we can have 10 puffle fishes or 50 puffle fishes. So that's great. That's really uh, what we want. And that's much better than in Scratch 2, where you actually had to duplicate the, uh, the sprites. And of course, you can change that 50 to as many as you want. Right. So we got sort of the fabric of the game uh, working now. We'll come to the diver at the end. Um, but what we want now is we want to be able to eat the puffle fish so that when the shark touches the puffle fish, um, it's going to eat them and add to the score. Uh, now, there are different ways to do it, um, but let's create a variable first. So we're going to create, make a variable called score. Okay, now there are many ways to do it, but I think the best way is to, is to it's because we've got lots and lots of puffle fishes, it's best to have the code inside the puffle fish itself, inside the forever loop. So inside the forever loop, uh, we can say if, and using the sensing, we can uh, sense if we're touching the shark. Uh, so, and um, at this point, uh, we know that uh, we're caught, so we can, we can uh, change the score. Add one to the score. We just put that in there. It should should work. Yes, yeah, as we touch touch the thing, we just need to put a little weight in there because it's it's doing it lots and lots of times. Um, but also, let's uh, let's just uh, uh, finish this off. So let's play a sound. So let's play a sound. Uh, what I want to do is just import the pop sound. So I'm going to choose a sound that already exists. I know I want the one called pop. Um, so that's in there. And what I want to do is here in the code, if I play the sound until, if I, if I, yeah, if I play the sound, pop like that. So I'm going to start the sound pop. Uh, and I'm just going to put a hide in there. And that should should let us let it work properly. So it's gonna, yeah. So it's just gonna. Uh, if we start again, I think we might need to set the score to zero. So there we go. So that's great functionality there. So that's the basis of, of, of the game working uh, already. Um, and what I'm doing here, just so the game doesn't get easier, I'm going to um, just clone the, the sprite after a, a certain number of seconds.
I'm going to wait here a random number of seconds. So in fact, I can wait. Let's go. Wait between five and ten seconds, and then I can clone myself. So there'll always be the same number of um, every time I'm, it's eaten, it's going to clone itself. So there's always the same number uh, on the screen. Uh, yeah, I forgot something here. Just an if on edge bounce. See, they're all they're all getting on the edge there. Great. So that's the pufflefish uh, finished. And obviously you can play around with these variables if you want to. So the diver is very similar to the pufflefish. So let's create the diver. I'm going to create it as a clone again. If you only wanted one, one diver, you could leave it as it is. Um, but we're going to create it as a clone again, and then we can have more than one diver. So just create a clone of myself. When I start as a clone, and let's just change the size, set the size. And just get it to start off in a random position. And a show. Let's hide the original clone, the original sprite rather. Okay, now we need to do very similar to the bubble fish. Uh, we want a forever loop. We want him to turn a random amount. And we want to move. And again, the number you put in here determines how fast it's going to be. So there he's moving about. Uh, and then what we want to do is, oh, we forgot the bounce. I keep forgetting the bounce. Uh, and now we want, when he's touching the sprite, uh, the shark rather, we want to set the score to zero and um, delete that sprite, that clone and get him to clone himself again. Uh, and then he's gone. So we want an if. Touching sprite, using the sensing, touching the shark. Uh, you can do clever things with touching color, by the way. But we don't need to here. If we're touching, we want to set the score to zero. Uh, we can play uh, a horrible sound. Now you can play sound boing here. Um, and you can play until done if you wanted it to pause. But we're just going to hide, hide him there. And then we don't need to do that. So here, just hit it. So he's gone. And I think what we'll do is we'll delete this clone and create him again. So delete this clone and then create a clone. So there'll be a new one. Oops. There we go. So that's it, more or less making what I've got in the real game. Here I've got another random that's that's creating um, uh, more than one diver just to make it harder. And then also what we're doing is we're just adding, adding um, an underwater thing. So that's more or less it. That's more or less the game made. Obviously, you can uh, make it a lot better and change all the sprites, um, but that's it. So have fun with that one, and thank you.